So very welcome to this uh, seminar or training session uh, in uh, handling large data with SNCC using Store. So I will go through a lot what Store is. I will also go through how you can access this in different ways. Um, also trying to be a bit interactive here as well to uh, actually illustrate how to use it live if it's possible. Uh, you will also get the slides when this uh, after this presentation. Uh, we'll put it on the on the web page for this course as well. So let's continue. So what what is uh, Sweet Store? So the mission of Sweet Store is twofold: basically to offload the center storage resources. So. The center storage resources connected to each uh, are connected to each cluster are high performance, uh, often parallel file systems uh, meant to handle loads of computational running computations. And to free up these uh, val more valuable storage resources, uh, Sweet Store can uh, you can upload your data to Sweet Store, Store as a kind of intermediate storage resource. Um, Sweet Store uses the Dcache storage server uh, as the underlying uh, software for distributing the resources. Um, and it stores the data distributed over uh, uh, all centers in Sweden, basically. So there are, at each of the large sites, there are storage pools with data, storing data for, for uh, Sweet Store. It has a central point where it stores the metadata um, for, for the file system and stuff like that, but, but actual data is stored, distributed over over entire suite. Uh, Dcache also supports most common access protocols, and you will see here that you can access it in, in a wide variety of ways. So I have done a small image here to illustrate the idea of how to use it. Uh, so basically, we have a lot of resources within SNCC, also local resources, of course, and most of these systems have center storage attached to them. Uh, let's see if I can have a pointer here. Uh, so you have a, for each resource there's a center storage system connected to it. And then there's a sweet store here as a, a middle layer that can that, that you can offload your data. So you can, for example, upload data from Darrell and you can, um, Download it to Alvis, for example, and vice versa. So you can move, you can use this as middle layer storage for when you run on different sites within SNCC. Uh, important also to know what, what uh, SNCC is not. So, uh, Swister is basically is for active research data. So, so the data should be used, um, meaning that it's, it's ongoing research. Uh, and we define it as an intermediate term storage device. So it has, it has longer lifespan than uh, central storage resources. Uh, but it's not supposed to be used for backups. Uh, and uh, if you state that it, you will use, uh, uh, hello, okay. apply for a project storage project that, uh, that you want to back up your data, it will be rejected. And it's also not supposed to be an archiving service. So uh, for, for a long-term storage or static data, that is something that each uh, university has to handle, has the responsibility to handle. That's important to note. So how do you actually apply for storage and get access to storage? So application is done through uh, Super. So if you have uh, applied for computational resources in Sweden before, you apply for storage in the same way as for uh, basically the same way as uh, for computational resources. Uh, there is a link here we can go to, so uh, allocation storage for information on how to apply and what you can apply to. Uh, applications are sm small, medium, and large. I think I missed the large one here. Uh, with the small and medium having continuous application rounds. So basically you can apply anytime and within certain time limit, you will get access to resource. For the large storage, there is uh, uh, larger rounds, uh, uh, only um, with a limited number of uh, uh, evaluations. So please look up exactly when those are um, the dates for those. 
So if you log into Super, uh, you go into the round section in your menu, and there should be a storage rounds uh, section. So click on go to storage rounds. Then you will have, uh, you can choose uh, between small, medium, and large. Um, and as I said before, small and medium, they have continuous evaluation rounds. Large stories have, has a limited number of rounds per year. And it's also more, uh, more technically evaluated, that, that storage. So you select the storage allocation. So in, in this example, I, I selected the small storage. Uh, and then I, I get uh, a message here that you can create a pro new proposal for small storage in 2022. So I just click the button here to create the proposal. And then I fill in a uh, project title. Uh, there is an also an option if you have previously had a storage allocation, you can clone an earlier proposal and use that as a, as a basis for, for the new uh, proposal. And then you fill in, in this case here, that you want the Dcash resource here uh, and fill in uh, the principal inf uh, investigator information. And uh, there is a bit more information to fill in for, for the uh, medium project. And also there is even more for, for the large project allocations. So when you have a project, of course you want to access the Dcash uh, storage. And Dcash supports a lot of different pro access protocols. So uh, from, from the beginning, it, it's used uh, something called Grid FTP, and also called GSI FTP. It's very well supported when Dcash, uh, mostly used in high energy physics, uh, high performance transfer protocol. So can be used for, for um, transferring a lot, lot of data and, and high bandwidth. Um, that is how it, and recently, it also supports uh, HTTP over WebDAV, the WebDAV protocol, which has been kind of the recommended protocol for Swiss Story. It, it's the easiest one to use and, and, and deploy on multiple platforms. It can also be mounted as a network drive, as I will show you later here. Uh, so you can use it as a, on your own machine. You can use it on, on a resource directly if you have desktop access to a SNCC resource. Uh, you can also access it directly on the web. Uh, there are several clients you can use as well to access uh, Swiss Store. Uh, there are graphical clients. So uh, on Windows, we have uh, the default uh, the standard clients for data transfer is uh, application called WinSFP. Uh, that also works for SS, SFTP and SFP transfers, uh, but you can also use uh, WebDAV, the WebDAV protocol to access the Swiss Store system. CyberDAC on Windows and Mac OS X is the default Mac client for accessing, and you can also uh, set up a WebDAV access using CyberDAC. And most operating systems today also supports mounting uh, WebDAV as drives directly in the operating system. So you can get a folder where you can upload and download files as well. Um, it's can, it, different implement or different platforms. And uh, there are also a bit, some platforms, it's, it's more complicated to do it. Um, I will show you later some short intro how to do it on Windows, but it's kind of not super efficient, but it works. Linux is easy. Mac is also relatively easy to do it. Um, if you are more working with workflow, data workflows and scientific workflows, sometimes it's more efficient to have command line clients to move and transfer data. And there are two basic recommended ones. Is the one Northern Grid Arc, which is a grid middleware a client uh, which supports data transfers between a lot of different protocols. There's also ArcClone, a command line tool for synchronizing data over the, over the internet for, to different re cloud resources. And it also works with Dcash. And it's very efficient and um, very nice to handle large synchronization of, of directory trees that you have. Uh, and there are some more as well. And I, in, in the final page, there is a link to all the doc documentation. So it's, it's very well written and perhaps a bit, uh, perhaps there needs some more structuring, but there is very good pages on uh, the different clients and, and the documentation on how to use the different clients as well. So uh, there are more clients than this. 
I try to make a, make a matrix of the clients here and wh when you can use them, which, which platforms they're available on. Uh, so user interfaces, user interface clients, we have WinSAP, CyberDAC, and WebDAV. So cyber, as I said before, WinSAP, only Windows, CyberDAC, Mac OS, and Windows. Uh, WebDAV, there are clients on Linux, so on, on Windows and uh, Mac. Nordogrid is only available on Linux. And our clone is available actually on all platforms. Um, there are some uh, caveats around our clone with regards to certificate and proxy certificates that makes it a bit cumbersome to use on, on, on Windows, but there are some ways to do that as well. Uh, so I will start just um, showing it how you can mount uh, Dcache. Uh, on a sneak uh, on a high performance computing resource, I'm, I'm using the the machine in Lund, which is very similar to the other sneak resources. Uh, I'm using it as a logged in uh, as a desktop uh, remote desktop environment, and uh, showing you how to mount it um, within that environment. So I'm going to switch over now. So as you see here, I have a, some basic storage folder op open here on the, my desktop here, and uh, I want to connect to Dcache and transfer files. So I just select file here in my file browser, and I do connect to server here. I choose the web dev protocol using HTTPS, which is the encrypted protocol. Select that one, and I do web dev dot store.se, which is the host name for the web dev entry to Swiss store. And I know that my, my, my folder for my, my allocated project is sneak slash um, storage training. And also I get my username here for eCash. Uh, don't click on remember passwords and stuff like that. I think it's a good habit to not store your password within desktop environments or clients. Uh, use a, a, a password storage uh, vault of some kind, for example, key pass to store your passwords. And then I press connect here. And now you see here that it opened another window here, very similar to the first, but you can see here it has a different uh, URL here uh, instead of the local file system here. Uh, but now I can go in here and I can, for example, drag and drop an uh, entire folder over here. And now this folder is uploaded to the Swiss store storage area. So this is a very, uh, very easy way to access uh, the Dcache storage. Uh, when I'm done using it, you can also see that it creates a, 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 a bookmark on your on your desktop here that you can uh, double click again to open it up. And you see now you see the, the root files storage here with SNCC and all the projects that are available here. Um, so I can go to storage training here in this area. And you can use the normal functions for deleting the folder here. Delete, and it's gone. And when you're not using it anymore, you can close it and you can right click here and select unmount here to unmount the storage. So now it's not available anymore. So that was mounting on a drive. So connect the server, enter these settings here. Of course, you have to update the folder for your, your allocated project as well. Uh, and then you also, then you get this, this uh, folder file, yeah. file window again open. So WinSAP. So that is the Windows program. It works very similar to the, the CyberDAC here. Uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't have time to actually do slides for CyberDAC, but it's very similar to, to WinSAP. So the, this, this is the same procedure. So I, I will start WinSAP now. Thank you. 
just trying to get it to the right window here. Um. Okay, now like that. Uh, so WinSAP, when you open it up, it shows you um, the dialog on, on creating different bookmarks for different sites. So if you want to add Swiss, so you click on new website, or in this case, in Swedish, new web plots, and you enter the same web, dav.swistore.se, and I select the protocol is webdav, and it should use encryption here, SSL, I enter my same username here. Same thing here. Uh, you shouldn't store it here. So now that did it the wrong way here. So if I press login here now, it will ask me for the password. If I put it there and save it, it was, was saved in the same session, which is uh, not recommended. So now you see here, it opened up and showed me a password prompt. So I select my password here. And now you see here, I'm in the SNCC here and I can go into um, SNCC training. Storage training there, of course. And I can, you can see I have some files here. And if I want to move files from, from my from uh, WinSAP, I can just drag them over like this. And I drop them on, on my uh, desktop. And it's available here. And it's the, win, the uh, screenshot of an image here. And the same thing, around, I, can, I can drag files uh, to WinSAP as well, and it uploads the files here. So it's a, a nice tool to uh, download and upload files to Swistor as well. If you have a Windows machine, this is the perfect tool. And the, it's a similar way of doing it in CyberDuck. So I close that down, okay. So webdav sv port number 443, it should be encrypted as a cell TLS. Your sneak username here that you, you when you when you apply for storage bar, you also apply for a user account. Uh, and this is the one here. Okay. And also if, if you have large running files, you will get the transfer dialogue showing you the progress of the transfer as well. So um, it's, uh, yeah. It's good to keep track of the status of your, if you have long running transfers as well. Now I will go through rather quickly how to mount it on, on the Windows desktop as well. I, I will not, there, there are, it's a procedure I haven't really ironed out, but it, it works, but uh, I had some bad experience as well. But in principle, it's quite capable of, of mounting as a, a drive in Windows as well. So what you have to do is you have to, I will get, go through this, this certificate you, uh, later on when you go to Nordic Art. You have to generate the certificate and import that into Windows. And you have to do that um, for the current user. And you select the file. Uh, you select the, the private key password. And you store it in, into the certificate store in Windows. And then basically you go to uh, your, your computer in Windows and you do uh, connect network drive. And then you get this dialog box where you can select the drive. And you can also select uh, uh, where which directory on Swiss you want to mount. So in this case, I selected webdav swiss.se slash snick slash storage training, which is my project. Um, and also important is that you have to check uh, connect with different authentication, uh, uh, different authentication. Uh, Methods, uh, the uh, account information, different account information here. And when you do that, you, you're asked for your Swiss store uh, username. 
Uh, you also have the select certificate here, which I we imported later uh, before. And when that is done and everything is, is okay, you will get Swister mounted directly in Windows. So now you have have a network drive Z, uh, which actually is the Swister uh, maps directly to the my, my project um, allocation here. So now I can use that as a normal files in Windows. I would not recommend uh, working live, for example, with Word documents and stuff like that. Transfer to and from this drive. I, I would say that not, not actively running things or working with it directly. Just use it for transfer because it will probably put a lot of load on uh, Sweet Store if you do very small data transfer operations on it all the time. So drag and drop files to it. Um, do not open and work with Word documents. I, I would not recommend that. Uh, you can also do this uh, on the command line in Windows as well. You can do net use C, and then you give it the entire URL again for the, the Swiss store storage system. And you can also uh, add a, a user account here as well to this. You get the same procedure. You have to select the certificate again, and then it, it's mounted. Uh, so this was the more the, the graphical part uh, for for using uh, Swiss Store. So the, the the following slides here will be more for those that are want to automate your um, your work. So it will be slightly more complicated to connect to Swiss Store in this way, but you will have a lot of benefits for uh, um, making your workflow much easier. So. As I said, for more advanced workflows, command line tools are usually preferable. And what you can do with these tools is you can actually automate data transfer uh, as they use a time-limited token for authentication. It's called proxy certificate. It's like a ticket that you show up, show to the system, and it just lets you through. So when you have created this ticket, you can use the commands without providing username and password. So basically, it's a ticket around the system. Um, and with this, you can also actually, in your uh, uh, computational jobs, for example, you can uh, uh, add data transfers, automatic data transfer to Swiss Store. Uh, you can also do jobs that, that do only do data transfers. That's also quite possible. Uh, to enable this, you need to use certificate and proxy certificates. And this can be a bit complicated to set up, but there are excellent documentation on the SNCC web pages for this. Uh, I will show you kind of on a high level how it's done. And uh, so the principles, not too much detail, but kind of just a workflow on how to get a certificate and then how you can use them with the um, command line tools on the, on the SNCC resources. Um, and also, there is a chat window. If you have any questions, just put them in the chat, and I will try to answer them during the talk as well. So the first middleware or client I will discuss, command line client, is the NorderGrid ARC uh, client toolkit. So this is a, a middleware that you can, or the client you can download uh, for accessing a lot of uh, different storage resources. Uh, it also contains uh, commands for submitting jobs to the grid, but we are not going to use those. We are going only to use the storage commands here. So it was developed to access the storage resources within the worldwide LHC computing grid. Uh, and Dcash was also developed for, for the uh, worldwide LHC computing grid. So it's, Dcash has a, a strong uh, VLCG influence. Uh, it also makes it very stable um, storage resource and also very, 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 very scalable. Uh, NordGrid Arc uses certificate-based authentication using this time-limited token, the proxy certificate. Um, the main commands in Arc is ArcCP for copying files. And with ArcCP, you can actually copy files from many different uh, protocols. There is a lot of protocols that are only VLCG based, but you have HTTP, HTTPS, HTTPG, FTP, GSI, FTP, and so on. Uh, there's also ArcLS for listing files on storage resources. There is Arc 
uh, rm for removing files, arc make dir for creating directories. And many of these commands are similar to the ones that you have in, in Linux and Unix, uh, but however, with a bit less functionality. <laughs> so, uh, so now I'm going to probably the most hard part of this course is how to obtain a certificate. Um, when I when I started the, my career in, in the grid, certificates was really, really hard to get. It has been quite simplified during the recent years. So most universities have in place procedures for, for you to actually apply for a, a e-science certificate that you can use with, with the resources within the grid and also within SNCC. So there should be a way for an, an each uh, university to apply for certificates. And, and the thing is that you, you uh, only have to do this once a year uh, to renew your certificate. You log into a portal. Uh, usually it is something called the Sectigo SS uh, portal for user certificates. And uh, you log in there and fill out some questions here and then you will get the certificate. However, you need to make sure that your, your uh, user account within your university uh, has an assurance level of, of a certain level. Basically, you have to have showed, um, showed your ID at some point during when you got your identity at the university. Um, so there is a, a page you can go to, and, uh, and currently it's, uh, uh, it's called certmanager.com and client child. That will go to the page where you can actually apply for a certificate. And when you go to this page, the first thing that will come up is you have to choose your institution. In this case, I, uh, I'm working at Lund University, so I select Lund University, and then I use my own sing, uh, single sign-on credentials here to log into the Lund University and identify myself to the portal. And when I have done that, I will create, get this form where you can um, you choose what kind of certificate you want. The important thing is here you need to select the short IGTF MICS personal certificate. Uh, the enrollment method should be key generation. Key type should be 4096. And then you, uh, sorry, you get, you uh, protect this uh, certificate with a password. Uh, and then you have to agree to the terms uh, and you click submit. And when you click submit, it generates a certificate uh, and it will take some time to do this. And at some point it will, um, um, your browser will download a small certificate file. So you will end up with, with a file that is named like this. So search.p12. Uh, and this file contains both the um, uh, a private key and a public part of your certificate. I will explain that just about this. Is, this is your identity that you will use uh, with the storage tools later on. Uh, first thing you, you need to do is also to you have to register your certificate uh, in your browser. And the reason we have to do this is to be able to register your certificate with, with Super as well. So it knows who you are when you're using these tools. So it associates you with your user account and your certificate. It makes a connection here. And there is a link here to do this mapping automatically uh, uh, if you follow this link here. So, and here you, you can go to this page here to actually register your um, uh, register your, your certificate with Super as well. So you can't you you have to do this before you um, use the the certificate based tools with with the uh, Swiss store. Uh, and as a final step, you have to take this file, the, the search P12 file. Um, and convert it in a format that the tools uh, use. So in this case, we have to extract one file called user-cert.pem, which is the your user public key. And then you have a secret part that's called user-key.pem, that is your private key. And that has to be extracted and stored on, on, the, the, on the server where you want to use these tools. 
Um, and I will just show you here, there is documentation on exactly how to do this step-by-step -step on the documentation site on SNCC. And I, at the final slide, you will get a lot of links where you can do this. So basically what you do here, you, you create a directory called .rrc. You set the permissions to 0700. And then you use OpenSSL, which is a Swiss RNI for certificate management. Uh, and PKC is 12, that is the format of your file that you receive from the portal. And then, then I, you enter some commands here and it will output the private key of your certificate. Uh, and then the input password is the password that you gave in the portal to protect your certificate uh, file. You enter that there and it will extract that file. And then you need to protect your private key on your system as well. So you give it a passphrase again, and you give it twice here, and then we'll encrypt your user key so it's, it's, it's not available to everyone on the system directly. So now you have these files. And now you also, uh, sorry, the second step is you need to extract the public part of the certificate as well. So you do the same thing, OpenSL PKC S12, and then you extract here, and then you get the user set.pen. And there, then you also here, you give the import password again, but in this case, you don't have to protect it because this part is can, it's not required to be protected. And finally, you set the permissions on the user key here to 040, so it's only available to you and it's uh, right protected as well. So it's only read, that's fine. So that was the hard part. So now we have our certificates in our home directory available for the tools to use. Uh, so in the next step here, we need to create something called a proxy certificate. And proxy certificate is a, a time limited kind of a, a ticket that you can show to the storage resources to uh, identify yourself. And that ticket is created from your uh, user certificate. And uh, the way you do that is using a command called arc proxy. Uh, and that will create that time limited certificate. So I will try to use, do this live here. I will open a terminal here. And I will type arc proxy. And the first thing is, uh, as, you, um, as I showed before, we encrypted our private key here to, to safeguard it on the system. So now I have to enter that password again to decrypt it. And if it was encrypted, decrypted correctly, it will be able to generate a certificate. And you can see here, it shows you my identity here. So it's this is my identity in the grid world. And that is also the, the name that is registered in the super system as well, mapped to your user account. And you say that your proxy is valid until uh, tomorrow at uh, 2 a.m. So after that, you can't use that token anymore. So it's also possible to change the time limits of the proxy. Uh, and there is documentation for that as well. Uh, so and you can also do arc proxy minus i to get more information out of this. So in this case, it shows you uh, much more information on what the type is uh, and the key length and uh, signature and so on. So uh, some more, this is also used if you want to see how much more you have left on your certificate, you can use this one to see. So uh, that information as well. You can also see where the, where the actual certificate is stored. So when you create this process, it creates that in the temporary directory uh, with a X509 UP. And then this here is your uh, user ID on the system, a Unix ID. And when you're not using the, don't need to use the proxy again, you can do arc proxy minus R to remove the proxy. Uh, and if you do arc proxy, 
minus i now, you can see it, there is no file here. Mark proxy. Created a certificate. So that is the way you create a token that you can use to identify to the storage resource using these different commands. This is what I showed before. Here you can see that 11 hours, 56 minutes, and 90 seconds left of my certificate here to use. So now we want to use uh, copy files to our uh, storage resource. So I will do this live as well. So we will use the arccp command, and you can see here if you type. Let me write focus here again. Um, arccp. You can always do minus help to see all the commands, the, the functionality of a command, and here you can see all, all the options that I have. So arccp takes a, a source and destination. Uh, so in this case, I, if I want to co copy a file here, I have some pictures here. I go into this here and I do um, arc cp image e. And I will copy that to, to Swistor. Then I type GSI FTP, which is the protocol I want to use. And it's stored. It has a different uh, host name when you want to use um, uh, the R command, so it's gsiftp.swistore. Uh, snick slash storage training. I usually end the directories with a uh, with a forward slash as well at the end. Okay. Click a different file somewhere. Uh, typical uh, demo gods here. Um, Okay, I will get back to my slides then. <laughs> uh, let's see if it works with here. I can use ArcLS to uh, list files. So GSI, FTP, column, GSI, FTP. Um, so we will do a, 
10 minute coffee break and I will uh, see if I can fix this. I have an idea what it could be. So uh, we'll take a short break and I will stop the post the record. Okay, so I managed to mess up my certificate installation, but now that it's fixed, so um, I have a working proxy certificate now, and uh, now we can continue here, and I will try to upload a file again. So I will do arcp, and then I select this, the source file, so in this case, my image here, e868 jpeg, and I want to transfer it to gsftpy colon uh, gsiftp dot sweet store. I can also, here I can just leave that out or I can give it another name, but in this case, I just want to transfer the name itself. And it's copied up and I have here the window here for Swiss store in my web dump, uh, explorer and I do reload here. You can see here it has transferred the file up. So that's working. Uh, I can also verify using arc ls, which is uh, lists of files in a certain directory on Swiss store. So if I do arc ls, esifdp, esi. Nick storage training. You see here now a listing here of the files. I can also do a more detailed listing here by using arc ls and I add the long. And then I get more information out here as well. Uh, sometimes you also want to do uh, uh, copy uh, recursively. So you have a directory structure that you want to transfer to, to Swiss store. And you can do that as well using the copy command. Uh, so you can, and you add the recursive switch to the uh, arccp command. So here I have a directory with called many files. It has a lot of files here, and I want to copy that over to Swiss store. So I do arc cp. I add a recursive. And here you spe also specify how many levels of recursion you want. So I just want everything. So I do 999. And I specify here that I want to transfer many files. And I want to transfer them to GSI FTP colon. Now it will copy all the files in many files directly under the storage training directory. So if I don't want that, I need to specify also that I want to have a folder called many files here that I want to transfer the files to. So I do this here. Uh, a good idea is also when you do this kind of long running transfers that you uh, add an option here to indicate that it actually is working. So indicate will give you a graphical feedback on the actual transfer of the files. So you get this kind of bar here for every file that transfers over. And when we are done, we should have a directory in our folder structure here. Let's see if we check, we do a reload here. And you can see here that many files has been transferred over. So that worked nicely. Um, so that was uh, recursive copying. There's also possibilities of actually querying uh, additional information on the file, for example, you, or directories uh, displaying its so-called metadata. 
that could be information like a checkpointing when, when it has been created and the modification times, size, etc. And you do that using the ArcLS metadata option here and your file here. So in this say if, if I do my many files folder, you get, uh, okay, it actually listed everything here. Um, but you can see you get um, checksum data, validity dates when it was created, a checksum and so on. So it gives you more information. Uh, it can also be useful sometimes to be able to create directories uh, at the remote storage. And that you can do with the arc make dir command. So you gsi ftp slash gsi ftp. And if we look at our photo structure now here again, you can see I have a new deer here as well. Uh, you can remove files and directories. Um, we can do that by arc rm, and we can see if we can remove the image file I have here. So 868. And if we reload here, that's fine, it's gone. You can also remove directories. Uh, so the new directory here, we can remove that. Uh, we copy this command here. Why we would only remove empty directories? You have to uh, remove the, uh, the files in the directories first before you can remove the, the directory itself. So that was that. So we covered this. This. So uh, some notes about long running operations. Uh, so let's see here. Long run after operation. So uh, if you have long running transfers, it's important that your proxy certificate or a time limit to the token actually is long enough to be able to uh, valid during the entire transfer. Uh, so you can use the our proxy dot i, which I showed you here, to show the remaining time of your uh, time limit to proxy. You can also use uh, arc proxy minus C and, and use the validity period option here to set a, a session with a longer lifetime. Uh, also, uh, it's a good idea to use uh, some kind of tool like screen, Tmax, uh, because if, if the, the terminal session terminates, your command for transfer will also terminate. Uh, you can also use, uh, if you have a desktop environment in, uh, at your research, you can log in using the desktop and have a terminal with your transfer in those. Uh, so, um, yeah, you, you need to have, be aware of that, that uh, the transfer is only running on as long as the command is running. And if the command is interrupted, the transfer will stop as well. Um, also, the transfer rates are largely dependent on the, on the average file size. So if you have a lot of small files, the transfer will be slower than you have large files. 
and also limit your transfer session. So for example, to one terabyte um, when you do that. So there's some, some general recommendation when you have a lot of things to transfer. So that was a short or kind of long introduction to the ARC commands. In the next part I will go through another tool that is uh, can be very useful and it, um, it's called ARC clone. So our clone is a, a general tool for transferring files from, from to and from different kind of storage resources with different protocols. It's a command line tool. Uh, and it's kind of like a Swiss army knife of cloud storage. So it, it can handle most things. So it can handle you for uh, backupping files to cloud storage. You can restore from cloud storage. You can mirror data to other cloud services. And it supports Swiss store. So you can use our clone uh, with Restore, and it's, it's a very powerful tool. Uh, first, you need to configure our clone for Restore. Uh, there is an instruction on how to use that on, on the documentation site of SNCC. Uh, you have to answer a certain number of questions uh, regarding, uh, and this is, I just put down the, the answers for here. You, you give new for new remote, Swiss store for name, web dot for the storage protocol. Uh, I feel in a lot of questions here, it's kind of just a step-by-step -step instructions. That will create a configuration file for you that, you that you will reuse all the time. So this is a kind of one step thing you do. Uh, and also the recommended way of using our cloud is to use certificates. So, uh, uh, we already have gone through certificate and it is exactly the same procedure. So to be able to use our clone efficiently, you need to create a, a proxy certificate and you can use the ARC proxy command to do that. So, uh, and then you can specify uh, ARC clone, or you can specify our clone here, which client certificate should use and the client key. So the, the user certificate uh, the, the proxy is actually both a public key and a certificate in uh, a key in, in a single file. So here you specify client cert and client key as an argument. Uh, and then you can use the tools here. But it's a bit cumbersome to always have to do this, these switches for every command or clone command you want to give. So the recommendation is to create uh, an alias for this. So we create an alias here. This is a, the, the way we we'll do it. We echo that alias, our clone cert, and that contains the certificate, these certificate switches, and we add that to bash RC. So every time you log in, it will define our, the our clone cert alias for you. And you can use, instead of using our clone command directly, use our clone dash cert uh, instead. So in the following examples, I have already configured this. So there, I have I have this alias in my terminal, and we use I use the Arclone cert command for all the examples I'm using now. So let's go back to our terminal. So as I see, if I do Arclone cert here. I, I get uh, the health information for the, you can see here that this is a extremely uh, powerful command line tool. It, it has commands for almost everything. Uh, so our clone cert already puts those switches in that points to my proxy certificate. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, uh, listing directories. So there are two commands in our clone, one called ls, lsd, for list directories and one for ls for list files. So to list directories, I can do our clone cert. And now we use Swiss store. So this Swiss store, this is the name you gave in the configuration of our clone. And you use that like a, a drive, you know, you know, and then we do snick storage training. Uh, I forgot the command here. So ls uh, 
and you can see here now I, it reflects my directory here, which I have here in my web browser as well. So I have my course, I have my many files. Then I can also do, uh, do uh, list files. So I can do same command here, but remove the D here. And then it lists all my files actually recursively in my uh, um, three star training, or oh, sorry, storage training for the project. Quite useful. You can also do, uh, you can copy a single file. So there is a copy to command. You type R clone cert copy to. And then you specify here, in this case, I have my image file again, IMG. Okay, I'm going to my picture folder like this. And R clone cert copy to. And then I do image. And then I give my sweet store. And now it should appear here again. Yes, so now I have a picture here again. You can do recursive copying. So let's see here, if I have my... Uh, I will do like this, I will remove these files here from my folder, delete all. And then I do R clone search copy. And I do many files. Let's restore. So let's see what happened here. So now you see here, it, it uploaded my many files here again. Uh, and you see it didn't do any status here. So this, this command will block until it's completely finished. Um, if you want to have a progress update during the copying, you can do that as well. So let's see, I will do delete here again, delete. And I will do R clone copy, and then I can add a switch called minus P, case P, which stands for progress. So that will display an, an, an ongoing progress bar here of, of the current transfer. So you can see here it transferred quite fast. So that's kind of, if you have larger uh, copy operation, that could be useful to kind of display the status of that. Uh, creating directories, yes. Of course, you can do it the other way around as well. So you can copy from Swiss or to directories on your home drive as well. So it's it's both directions. Uh, you can create directories as well, uh, of course. R clone search, and you do make dear. Swiss store. Let's see. Yes, we have a new directory. Uh, you can remove the directory as well if they are empty using the rmdir command. So let's see here, we do rmdir. And the directory is gone. Um, 
you can also you can't you can only de delete empty directories. You can delete all the files in a directory. I'm not do, using the delete command, uh, and then you can remove all the empty directories using uh, rm. So I, I, I can. I think I can try. It. I have my many files here. So let's see here if I can remove that. R clone search. First, I de delete uh, all the files in the directory. So delete. And then I do. So let's see, do I have any files here? Now I only have directories now in my folder. So then I can do. Uh, rmdirs as the second command here. And that should work. And it's gone. So that, that is the quite powerful command. So, so our clone cert is, I, I would say, a bit more robust in handling a lot of files. It's also when you do a copy a second time, it will only transfer modified files. It will compare and check so that they are, um, uh, if they have been modified and not, it will uh, not transfer those files that has, 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 haven't been mod modified. So it will do a compare. So that is quite good if you want to update the data set that you have on Swiss store. You can do the copy and it will automatically sync the files. So let's see here. Um, yes. So finally, I have um, some explanation information here. So the Dcache command line clients are clone should be installed on all SNCC resources. Uh, if not, I think you can ask for, for example, our clone and ARC to be installed on your on your site. Um, and also web dot mount of dcache should be available on most resources, for example, a remote desktop service. So if, if you have a desktop with a file browser, usually you can do a web dot mount on that desktop environment. So if, if it's not available, ask for it to be available and, and uh, they will probably provide that. Uh, okay. Uh, finally, uh, I have tried to collect a lot of the documentation in, on the Swiss store sites. Um, the documentation very, um, it's a bit difficult to find, but it's very, they're very well written and uh, very concise. So um, I think it's very relevant to start there if you want to use the Swiss store. You can use this PowerPoint slide as well, but this gives you an introduction, but here is more details on everything. And um, so please have a look at the documentation to see how to use the different things. And also, as I said before, there are more clients available that you can use with WeStore as well. So have a look and, and see what, what that fits your bill uh, with regards to access and storage. So I'm going to stop the recording now, open for questions.